this low lost result did stand until 2018. So it's a very significant result. So anti-resonant fibers um, in, in development um, in parallel with Holocaust type banger fiber, but the losses were quite high, so they didn't get received quite as much attention at the time. Um, so the, the progression was, was driven by many groups around the world. And the technology progressed with the, the development of the lattice um, and, and the core surround. Um, but it was also noted that you didn't need the entire lattice to demonstrate low loss. Um, and then other notable um, improvements came from adding a, a negative curvature, so-called negative curvature around the core, which pushes the, the light field further away from the lattice and away from those junctions, which improved uh, the structure dramatically. Reduction of the cladding to just a collection of, of tubes, um, and then methods to drive that light further away from the glass until in 2013, the first non-touching tube structure was demonstrated. And this meant that you have a nice purity of anti-resonant thicknesses, which gave a very clean transmission bandwidth. So these um, non-touching tubular fibers are really now the new generation of anti-resonant fibers. Um, so that thickness gives the confinement, which means we get a nice clean uh, transmission without um, lots of resonances breaking up that transmission window and it can be extremely broad. Um, so this is the, that first result from 2013. The thicknesses were larger so the transmission windows operate in a, in a, a longer wavelength than normal telecoms and the losses were quite high. So next came uh, another example with many small tubes um, again, high losses, 120 dB per kilometer and slightly longer uh, wavelengths. Trying to bring that wavelength towards uh, uh, 1550, we've got thicknesses around 440 nanometers. But again, the losses are still quite high. So in this work, we demonstrate less than 30 dB per kilometer. So a big step forward from, from these examples. And a, and a bandwidth much closer to t telecoms uh, wavelengths, um, which means we can run data transmission experiments. So this is that fiber. Um, we have around a 40 micron core, seven capillary tubes, each around 20 microns across, and notably the thickness here. So this thickness drives the position of the low loss window. And so at 360 nanometers, um, we can expect <clears throat> that resonance to be around 800 nanometers and uh, the fundamental transmission window to be um, from around 1,000 nanometers up to maybe 1,800 nanometers. <clears throat> so this is the loss of that, of that fiber. And uh, this is measured using cutback method. You can see we've got a broad window that guides from somewhere around 850, 900 nanometers all the way up to 1800 nanometers below 100 dB per kilometer. So it's a huge bandwidth. <coughs> so in terms of octave, that's one octave. Um, and you can see we've got almost thousand, or over a thousand nanometers for that, that loss threshold. And at less than 30 dB per kilometer, we've got uh, over 400 nanometers. So it's a huge improvement from the state of the art at the time in anti-resonant fibers. However, if we look at the other fibers of the time, we have that PPGF, much, much lower losses, but very small bandwidth. Then a, a different PPGF, which has got the wide bandwidth, but the higher loss. And it's also note how this smooth and um, a different Kagomi structure again with the narrow bandwidth. So huge bandwidth in comparison to the other structures. In terms of increasing uh, the performance, reducing the loss, um, we have a few methods available to us. The first direct one is to make that structure a little bit more regular. Um, and also we see that um, that will reduce the loss down to 10 dB per kilometer. You also have the option of adding nested tubes, which was at the time only explored theoretically. 
and we'll see a bit more of that later. So the other reason these fibers are so good at broadband with uh, transmission is that the dispersion is low and flat and remains low across the entire low loss window. So where the resonance, um, the high loss resonance is that, that defines the beginning of the transmission window, the, the dispersion swings very aggressively. But as soon as we get to the low loss region, it levels out and stays below around 2.5 um, for the entire uh, transmission window. You compare that with SMF, which has only a very, a very steep transmission curve, uh, sorry, very steep dispersion curve, um, which does cause a lot of, uh, a lot of issues if you want to transmit data across the full bandwidth range. I think that's single mode and modal content. So HCF are typically multi, uh, few moded. And this is because the core size is quite large. Um, however, the capillaries in the cladding support their own modes. So what can be done is we can choose the dimensions of these tubes to phase match cleanly with the higher order modes of the core. Um, so when they couple across, um, so if they phase match, there will be coupling between those modes. And the tube modes being right next to the jacket glass are extremely high loss. So the light will couple from the core into the tube mode and then be lost to radiation. So after a few meters of transmission, we can um, have a very clean uh, single mode transmission. So this has also been performed in, um, in PPGF using these shunt cores, um, exactly the same principle. The these shunt cores um, are sized to support the higher uh, a mode which is phase matched to the higher order mode of the core. So, uh, modal content can be measured experimentally using uh, S2 spatial and spectral imaging. Um, and with our fiber, we used a spliced input. And after three meters, you get a very distinct LP11 measured at around 20, uh, minus 20, P, 20 dB. But after 100 meters, the, um, the uh, trace is clean and no LP11 uh, or other mode, in, in fact, is seen at all. <clears throat> so we conducted some data transmission experiments, and this is the first data transmission experiment in a hollow core fiber. Um, over 100 meters on off keying. Um, and we used three wavelengths to really demonstrate the breadth of the bandwidth. Um, 1065, 1565, and 1963. And they all uh, performed with uh, BER penalty-free. So I just want to tell you a little bit about what happened since 2016. So we've put a lot of effort to uh, drive down the loss. So this required developing new structures. And we managed to make great progress improving the transmission rate using WDM and recirculating loops. And that also meant we had to make long expansive fiber. So looking at HCF over the recent years, the generation of nested tubes um, entered into the literature. We have demonstrations from 2015 all the way up to our first uh, published NAMP in 2018, which is now better than that 2004 PPGF paper. Um, and since then, we've been just making more and more progress. Um, and um, until 2022, when we published our DNAMP paper. And this one has loss that is less than your, the classic 0.2 dB per kilometer of SMF um, in, in the S and the C band. Um, and comparable with some of the highest performing uh, single mode solid fibers. Uh, more to be published on this from us. So if we just have a quick look at the loss over the years, you can see that you get this remarkably similar curve of uh, loss progression um, in hollow fiber as we see in the solid fiber in the 70s. Um, so we're hoping this will keep going down a bit further than that, that solid, solid fiber record. <coughs> 
So a little bit more about um, data transmission. Um, you can see the, um, if we use recirculating loops and we have very high quality fiber and very delicately engineered experiments, then we can get several thousand kilometers of, of transmission. Um, in this experiment, we needed five kilometers of fiber in the loop. Um, so that's several hundred um, passes. And you can see that we managed to get um, almost 6,000 kilometers in uh, 2021. Um, so this would be the first PPGF, less than 100 kilometers, um, but using our ever improving uh, now fibers, we managed to get 6,000 kilometers. So in conclusion, um, we uh, I've presented this paper that we, we produced and published in 2016, 2017, um, demonstrating a tuber HDF with an octave spanning bandwidth.